thank everybody for being here today. We're gathered behind the office of the governor and uh, we are unveiling our new flag today for the state of Virginia. And the Latin at the bottom reads, thus sold to tyrants. And this is reflective of Governor Northam and his inaction in stopping the pipelines. So thank you everybody for being here today. I just have some brief intro comments. As communicated by Stacy at our first gathering, we'd like to begin this time and every time by acknowledging that the land threatened by these pipelines has been stolen once before from the indigenous peoples of those areas. That it is indigenous land that we stand on here today and that it is indigenous peoples who started and lead the pipelines resistance movement. We gather again to remind Northam of his own words, even pictured right here, to follow the science, to trust in the agencies and to require a stream by stream analysis. Governor Northam, you are at a point of diminishing return for our environment. Each day of inaction renders your own words less viable, your commitment to the Commonwealth's environment weaker, and your role as a climate leader less viable. Our DEQ is not king. David Paler is not king. Melanie Davenport is not king. The State Water Control Board is entitled to the final say on the Atlantic Coast and Mountain Valley pipelines. As clearly spelled out in their responsibilities as a governor appointed citizen led board. And now, as the evidence piles up, the former Governor McAuliffe allowed mitigation negotiations before the DEQ even opened the projects to public review, that the DEQ has admitted they didn't have sufficient staff to review the projects, that they tried to claim autonomy over the certification process, which the State Water Board clearly communicated was not what they agreed to, not to having. They also have no one on the ground as violations have started racking up in the pre-construction phase. They've purposely delayed opening the technical comment period for two weeks, inching it closer to the end dates of state water control board members whose terms are expiring in June. This is not the transparency that Governor Northam claimed was mandatory to this process when he wrote the DEQ in February 2017. Governor Northam has the power, the quick ability, the lifting of a phone receiver the power and the ability to call the DEQ and require stream by stream analysis. As we gather again this week, we also recognize the peril facing the brave tree sitters and monopod sitter. We keep the Terry and Riley families and Chapman families in our hearts as they face uh, the fight ahead of uh, the federal trials for the Terry family and uh, for trespassing, in quotes, on their own land. Northam has the power to stop this madness and to stand up for affected communities, our environment, and our future. And uh, now Stacy is going to read the letter that we are delivering to the governor today. Okay. So, Governor Northam. Recently, you have claimed that you want to allow the regulatory agencies to do their jobs with regards to the Atlantic Coast and Mountain Valley pipelines. What is your response, then, to the Department of Environmental Quality overstepping its bounds to hinder the job of the State Water Control Board? When voting to delay the certification of the Atlantic Coast pipeline in December, the board made it clear that the public and the board should have input on any new plans submitted for the pipeline. DEQ, however, approved the plans and any new plans for the Mountain Valley Pipeline without public input and the board was not given any autonomy during that process. Most recently, the board recognized the concerns involved with the DEQ waiving its right to perform site-specific water body crossing analysis for the pipelines and instead utilizing the Army Corps of Engineers Nationwide Permit 12. The board voted to have a new public comment period open regarding this issue. In continued efforts to hinder the board, the DEQ delayed the opening of the comment period for weeks. In a statement regarding the comment period, the DEQ said, the board raised no specific areas of concern, provided no technical information that NWP-12 was insufficient, and took no action to revisit the certification of NWP-12. And I mean, the tone of this statement is a clear attempt to downplay the board's concerns, and the statement itself is false. Enough concerns were raised for the board to vote to open the comment period to begin with, which in and of itself is an action taken to revisit the NWP-12 issue. Not only that, the DEQ significantly limited the scope in which the public cannot comment, I mean, can comment by requiring comments to be about a specific water body. The board, in voting to open the comment period and revisit the NWP-12 issue, referenced concerns that every single water body needs to be analyzed. 
the DEQ should not be attempting to use this as an opportunity to tie concerns to specific water bodies so that they can replace analyzing every water body for those specifically mentioned in comments. The DEQ also stated that it would summarize relevant comments for the board. That's just another word for the DEQ will emphasize the comments that best support their cause and de-emphasize the comments that they don't like. The State Water Control Board is the citizens board responsible for overseeing the protection of our water quality. The DEQ, in an obvious attempt to get these pipelines in the ground at the behest of the pipeline companies, is obstructing the board's abilities. Governor Northam, you must require power to be restored to the State Water Control Board. You must also require a, a stay of construction for the pipelines. Again, you stated you want to allow the regulatory agencies to do their jobs. Our regulatory State Water Control Board is attempting to do its job by opening a comment period for legitimate and justified concerns regarding the use of the NWP-12. The pipelines should not continue to progress until this job has been done. There are petitions to the regulatory agency, FERC, to have a rehearing on the pipeline certifications. Again, the pipelines cannot progress until these petitions, including from Senator Tim Kaine, have been considered and the job of rehearing has been done. There are several legal challenges currently in the courts regarding the pipeline certifications that have not yet been ruled upon. The courts, the judicial regu regulators over property rights laws, laws you called for to be respected regarding the pipelines, and the abuse of eminent domain laws must be able to do their jobs before these pipelines progress. Again, you must require a stay of construction for these pipelines if you are truly to allow the regulatory agencies to do their jobs. And ultimately, if you are to stand by your word as a gubernatorial candidate, sorry, you must require a stay of construction until site-specific water body analysis has been completed, something you publicly called for. If you ever had any intention of standing by your word, and if you truly aren't under the control of Dominion money, restore power to the state water board and require a stay of construction on the pipelines. You absolutely do have the authority to make this happen and you cannot trick us into thinking otherwise. Sweet. Chance. Yep. Okay. Did you Northam, can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. Can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. Northam, can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. Northam, can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. Northam, can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. Northam, can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. DEQ is not king. 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 Water is life. 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 Life. Sure. Um, how about stand with red? Stand with red. Stand with red. Stand with. Stand with red. 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 Once more. Stand with red. Okay. And so now we'll open it up for um.
Anybody else to speak um, if they want to share anything? So. I'm pretty clocked out these days, but I think maybe my folks. Anybody over here? We're just going to reiterate for the hundredth time that we need to do the stream by stream analysis of all water bodies, upland and lowlands, um, and protect our city's drinking water and our private property. Um, <coughs> I've just, <re> uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I've just returned from uh, the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, <coughs> where Indigenous people from all around the world meet and come and talk about um, concerns that are facing them. Um, and I'm not surprised, but always astonished and disheartened by how much this pipeline infrastructure project mirrors those kinds of infrastructure projects going around the world that are destroying our environment. Um, and this project will be no different from those. And I come away from that realizing that in so many places, governments collude with multinational corporations to take away land and rights from people, which is exactly what's happening in the state of Virginia today. Um, we have to stop both of these corporations from doing that in our state and to our water and air. Um, as if only as an example to people around the world that they can stop the projects that are happening and destroying their land and air as well. I, I want to say um, this this uh, this disaster, these pipelines, what's going on is um, really the thing that is going to define Governor Northam's tenure. And um, I wish he would realize that. I wish he would at least have the courtesy to come out and listen to the people and talk to them and respond. Um, this is a huge disaster. It's it's a it's an environmental racism. It is um, social injustice. It is a huge disaster. And this is not going to go away even once it's built, if it is built, which we hope won't happen. It's not going to go away. The, the, the problems are going to keep on mounting. He cannot, he cannot turn a blind eye to this. Governor Northam, come out, pay attention, look at what your constituents are telling you. Well, I would like to ask the governor to please listen to us. We, the people, are here, and our movement is growing, and our movement is not going away. Come and listen to the people of Virginia and hear what we have to say about protecting our land and our water. Governor Northam, keep your promises. The recent ruling by the Supreme Court gives you power, just like it gave to New York State. You have power to control the pipelines if you choose to do so. Keep your promises. Let's see a work stop during the comment period. In fact, suspend the 401 certification altogether during this period. That's within your power. That's what the Supreme Court says. Are you listening to big money or is the Supreme Court important to you? I hope you'll make the right decision for your constituents. As I stand here today, my phone is buzzing constantly with texts and mails from my neighbors and my friends on Bent Mountain who are currently besieged by tree cutters tree cutters that are not following the lines, they're cutting out of borders, they're dropping trees in wetlands. There is all manner of abuse and intimidation going on facing your citizens. Please do something about this. Stand up for us. One thing I'd really like to point out is 
during this incredible lack of leadership and even entrance and even a very flippant attitude towards this issue, during all this is happening, they are allowing ATVs to plow through the Appalachian Trail, which is an obvious source of pride, beauty, and one of the national treasures that make Southwestern beautiful. And I would say to Ralph Northam, that is going to be your legacy, to let this beautiful, internationally known place be run, rap shot, rap shot uh, uh, by these complete out-of-state workers that could care less. That is another facet of this incredibly poor leadership, and, and, and that is going to be your legacy, to let the Appalachian Trail be damaged carelessly. And I think because of that, it's going to show Governor Northam that you are going to go down on the wrong side of history. Thank you, Genesis. <clears throat> Since he has a responsibility to take care of Virginia also, we return to remind you, Attorney General, of your legal responsibility to uphold the autonomy of the State Water Control Board, whose purpose is to ensure the health of the Commonwealth's waterways as they examine the proposed MVP and ACP. The DEQ is denying them their autonomy over the certification process, claiming they themselves have the final say. As we mentioned before, they delay the new open comment period after issuing a dismissive assessment of its need. You are facing a moral crisis perpetuated by eminent domain abuse and the ability of out-of-state for-profit companies to make local law enforcement and Forest Service employees complicit in their ruin of our environment. Brave Tree and Monopod sitters have sacrificed their personal safety to protect our state. As you work to fight the Trump administration's dismantling of the EPA's protective measures, please look around you. We need that fight here. Virginians were denied a fair, transparent review process for the MVP and ACP. The DEQ allowed pipeline applicants to meet for two years to facilitate approval of the projects, and Governor McAuliffe met secretly for 18 months to create mitigation agreements. The public's ability to provide input was rushed, flawed, condensed into a few months. The transparency and the trust in the process is eroded. As the MVP and ACP would introduce a thousand miles of sediment dumps and herbicides into waterways, miles of mountaintop removal, abuse of eminent domain, loss of tourism revenue, pollution emitting compressor stations into our Commonwealth, we ask that you, using your legal authority, Attorney General, do the following. Require a stay of construction immediately, as the State Water Control Board had significant concerns over water quality and the ongoing legal challenges to the permits. Instruct the DEQ, who is not king, to reinstate the Water Board's ability to have final input on the certification process. Challenge the legality of the memorandums of understanding that Governor McAuliffe signed. They were made without public notice, in secret negotiations for 18 months, and do not provide funding for the localities along the way, along the paths. Acknowledge the environmental justice issues of the MVP and ACP, that their proposed routes disproportionately affect communities of color, indigenous communities, and low-income communities. Challenge, the, challenge FERC's issuance of a certificate of public necessity, as you mentioned. The projects are not needed, and the New York State Attorney General's office has set this precedent. So look north for that. Attorney General, please act in the best interest of our health and safety now. So we would like to... Um, before we, um, and if anybody hasn't signed, we've got the letters, and then we're going to deliver them to the office of the governor and then the mail room of the attorney general. Rise like the water, going to shut these pipelines down. I hear the voice of my great-granddaughter say climate justice now. People going to rise like the water, going to shut these pipelines down. I hear the voices of my great-granddaughter say climate justice now. People gonna rise like the water, gonna shut these pipelines down. I hear the voices of my great-granddaughter say climate justice now. People gonna rise like the water, gonna shut these pipelines down. I hear the voices of my great-granddaughter say climate justice now. Thank you, Lee. And um, thank you so much. And really appreciate y'all sharing this fight with us. And um, thank you for everybody that was able to make it out today. So um, 
We are going to go ahead and birthday tomorrow. And she's awesome all around and an awesome organizer and an awesome water protector. So I thought we could sing happy birthday to her. So one more song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jess. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Weeks we've seen the governor make several statements regarding the pipelines. And these misleading and sometimes downright false statements will not fool us into thinking he cares or is doing the right thing. Um, okay guys. In fact, by the minute, more and more Virginians are realizing how little value his word carries and how he is doing the exact opposite of the right thing. And by the minute, the governor continues to portray his word like his abandoned call for site-specific water body analysis. He even betrays the empty words he's offered in recent weeks to gaslight Virginians into believing he's doing the right thing, like his statement mentioned in the letter we just read that he wants to let the regulatory agencies do their jobs. Yet he stands by as the DEQ obstructs the State Water Control Board's work, and he allows the pipelines to progress before all necessary regulatory avenues have been considered. If the governor doesn't care about our water, health, or property rights, let me put it into terms he will care about. If he plans to have any sort of career past this term, he would do good to quit the deception and stand on the right side of the pipeline fight because more and more Virginians are catching on to his tricks. The fire is spreading and it's an in inextinguishable one. And I think it's pretty clear that it's the beginning of the end for these corporations like Dominion and EQT. And he, he can either stand with us or he can go down with them. So.